Hey guys and welcome to this week's installment of Tuesdays with Lauri. My name is Lauri Laukkanen and I'm one of the editors at SLR Lounge. You can also find me on Facebook at Lauri Laukkanen Photography. Today we're going to be editing one of your photographs. This image uh, of the snowboarder was submitted by Lyuba Yanev and uh, I like the image and feel that we can do a few cool things to make it visually a bit more pleasing to the eye. So. With that said, let's get started. Uh, the image, as you can see, is a bit underexposed. As you can see, we really don't have a lot of detail in our subject's face, and we could use a bit more detail in the background as well. But the good thing is that nowadays you can shoot raw and uh, save these types of images in Photoshop. And that's exactly what, I, what we're gonna be doing today. So we're gonna go through uh, this Photoshop file layer by layer, but first let's take a quick look at the final image that I created based on Lyubos photo. Here is the final image that I created. As you can see, I brightened up the image. We added, uh, we got some detail in our subject's face. We got some more detail in the background. I got rid of some distracting elements in the background and I made the composition a bit more visually pleasing. But with that said, let's start out by taking a look at how I created this thing. So we have a brighten up layer here. So what that means is I'll show you guys first. So I brightened up the layer and how I did that was I opened up this uh, image as a smart object. I'll show you guys from here double click, let it load. So we have, I pulled up the exposure and uh, added a bit of brightness into the shadows and pulled up the blacks as well and then pulled down the highlights a bit and this way got all the detail that I wanted into our subject's face and into the background. This of course comes with a cost of added noise in the background but we can take care of that later so that was okay. We click OK and see how it looks. Yeah so now we have a bit more brighter layer, which has the detail that we want in our subject's face and in the background. Then what I started doing was I started coloring the image, worked uh, with, uh, with the flare that you see on the left, and did a few other fixes. And now when we turn this group on and off, you'll see the color and uh, what I did with the flare. Let's take a look layer by layer what we have here turn these off and the first thing I have is a black and white adjustment layer and what it does is it darkens up some of the areas uh, of the image I have this black and white uh, layer and instead of having it on normal like this I have it on multiply which uh, kind of it's now it's darkening up the areas instead of making them black and white so that's what I have here, down with the opacity of about 16%. Then I have a curves adjustment layer that I used to color the image. I added a bit of blue into the shadows, uh, took away some reds, and that's pretty much it. Then I have a hue and saturation layer that I used to saturate this uh, metal or orange metal bar. So when I put it on and off, you, if you look at the bar, you see it uh, I added a bit of saturation there then I uh, take a look at the left side here I added a flare or a slight flare slash light leak I would uh, light leak on the side and then just to ta make it a bit more natural I added another light leak in the middle of the image here then what I have here is actually a motion blur layer so if you look at the image here now on this side here I have a bit of motion blur going on just to add a bit of uh, motion into the image but this is a very subtle effect you really don't want to overdo it if we pull that uh, opacitive up to 100% you see how bad it really looks so I just pull it down to about 15% and that's totally enough 
no more needed. Then I have another curves adjustment layer, which I used to brighten up uh, our subject's face a bit more. So if you look at his face now, we get a bit more detail there. So that's what I have here. And then on this layer, what we have, if you, if you look at the layer mask, I just have a, a vignette, which I created around some of the areas. Very subtle vignette, but it, it looks nice. And then we have a hue and saturation layer that I used to add a bit of saturation to the uh, his uh, these blue areas here and to the green areas in his jacket. So we put it on and you'll see a bit more saturated blues and greens. So this group all together on and off, I had, uh, colored the image, played around with the flare and did a bit of fixes. And that's what this group is all about. And then the next group is what I call the blur, distractions and sharpen group. And when we put it on, you'll see I sharpened up the image, got rid of the distracting background elements, uh, the light posts and lightened up the image a little bit more. Plus blurred uh, this side of the image. If you look, I turn it on and off. So I added a tilt shift blur to kind of blur the foreground a bit. We can go through this quickly layer by layer. Here first I have just a high pass sharpen layer. Then I have a stamp visible layer, which is a bit brighter and blurred. And then here, is uh, the layer that I used to get rid of the distracting background elements, the light posts. And then here I have, uh, I added a bit of more light into the uh, left upper corner, created a light leak there. So that's what this group was all about. And then final fixes, <laughs> after playing around with the flare, I felt kind of that the composition itself was a bit unbalanced because of uh, the flare and the amount of stuff going on on this side of the image. So what I decided to do in the end was get rid of the flare altogether. And how did I do that? I'll just show you guys, I took it away like this. And now we can take a look at how it was done. So I'm gonna turn these layers off. First I have, a again, a black and white layer turned on overlay this time, which pretty much does the same thing as multiply. It just uh, worked a tiny bit better with the highlight areas this time. So that's what I did here. I did a black and white adjustment layer and pulled down the opac opacity quite a bit and used the overlay blending mode. And that way I bit, added a bit of grittiness, edginess into this image. And then, now here I'm getting rid, in this layer I'm getting rid of the flare. So when I put it on you'll see what I did was I just picked a color from here. So I have I have the brush tool, I push down the Alt key and select the color from here and then just paint it over the flare. Now that is not the best way to do this. You could use the clone stamp and if you look at, at this closely I'm not sure if you'll see it. But we have noise here but then when I paint over we kind of lose the noise. So now this looks fake. You can see that it was painted in. So what I had to do was I had to add noise, but add noise only to the areas that I painted it and painted in. So what I did was I added a layer, which was, uh, which had a lot of noise or added noise to this image and then, uh, clipped it to the lower layer. That way this noise layer here, was only visible uh, in the areas that I was painting in. So I'll show you guys. Now I turn this on, but now let's put this on normal instead of soft light. And you'll see it's only visible in the areas that I was painting in because of this clipping mask. And now when I turn it to soft light, now the noise is in the areas where I was painting in. And now this looks a bit more natural and you don't really see that I was painting it in with a normal brush. And then I added a bit of noise to the blurred areas around here as well, uh, as I felt uh, I felt that it made the blur look a bit more realistic. So I added some noise to these areas here. 
And then in this final folder, what I have is uh, I worked with the composition. I felt that uh, the original composition, which was cut from here, was a bit too center oriented, in my opinion. I wanted to have our subject in the uh, around here instead of the center of the image. So what what I did was uh, I just let's put this on your see continued this part of the image, dragged it to the side to add a bit more uh, negative space around here and made the composition work a bit better, at least in my opinion. So just to show you guys, I have th this here. Then I added this layer here, which is just a stretched part here. I'll show you just the layer alone. So it's just this part here. And then as you can see, the flare got stretched as well. And that's something that anyone could see and guess that I uh, stretched it. So it looked a bit Photoshoppy. So I had to get rid of this uh, flare here, but just to use the clone stamp tool. And finally added a bit of noise to just these areas where I was painting in, plus used the clone stamp tool. So I added a bit of noise here. And that's pretty much it. So. Just a quick run through. Let's turn these layers off again. I brightened up the image. Uh, I colored the image, added some flare, and did some fixes. Here I uh, blurred this area here using the tilt shift blur and uh, got rid of the distracting light posts behind our subject. And uh, of course, brightened up the image a bit a bit and then I have the final fixes folder where I decided anyway to get rid of the flare like this and finally played around with the composition so that it was a bit more visually pleasing at least to me. Thank you guys for watching this week's installment of Tuesdays with Lauri and as always if you have any questions or further requests for future episodes just let me know by leaving a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you all out. And with that said, thank you for watching and see you again next Tuesday. Bye.